A mole in your vegetable garden is not such a big problem by today's standards. But let's say you lived 150 years ago and a handful of seeds is all you had for next year's crops. You had to get rid of that mole. The welfare of your family depended on it. This mole trap solved an ordinary problem in a clever way. On the frontier, most of life's problems were ordinary, but their solutions were often ingenious. In the beginning, when they needed something in this uh, rural frontier region, their whole thought process had to revolve around how they could make it themselves. This uh, little uh, auger or bow drill, as it was called, could be made uh, by, with a piece of rawhide and a piece of uh, hickory. And this tool was developed, I guess, in every civilized country, but it's so simple and, and yet useful, and it was used to bore holes to make chairs and furniture. In an age before hardware stores, nails, and glue, everything was held together by pegs in holes bored by the auger. No home could be built without it. And no home was complete without some way of dealing with a common but very serious problem, house flies. This glass jar has no bottom. And that's on purpose because the flies would alight here if you had a little sugar. And uh, most of the sugar or cornbread or whatever would be underneath. And once they alighted on the table, they would crawl in here. And once they got their fill, they would start flying upward. <laughs> and it never occurred to any of them, I don't think, to crawl out the way they went in. So you could catch the entire bowl full of flies at one time. What's this thing here? This was, a, was an earlier device that was made by a fellow by the name of Jesse Grant, who was a second cousin to President Grant and settled in Campbell County. And while uh, people were eating, the head of the table, Mr. Grant would sit here and treadle this and, and uh, keep all the flies minded away from the table while, uh, while the family did eat. I only have two hands was no excuse on the frontier. An ingenious mind would always find a way to do more. It's sort of hard to shuck peas and keep your foot going at the same time. Though, you know? For some people it's hard. Some people <laughs> have no problem doing that. I don't think your great-grandmother would have a problem with that. <laughs> Early settlers didn't have a problem making music either. Building the instruments was the tricky part. Where'd you get that? This came, I bought this from a fellow by the name of Luther Graves, who still lives in Knox County out on Thomas Weaver Road. He was one of 26 children. This banjo belonged to his father. And that's why it's been torn up, maybe? It's torn and patched very carefully there. What's that made of? Well, the head is made of, of groundhog, which uh, was the favorite. This is a, a typical groundhog hide, and then uh, this is the uh, the other side of it, which is similar, as you can see, to the head of the banjo. And they were, groundhog hide was always considered to be the, the favorite skin to make the banjo head. Sometimes they used cat hide, but, but uh, it was a groundhog that was always sought after. That's made out of a gourd, just a regular gourd that we would grow here in the garden. And my old friend up on top of Cumberland Mountain, uh, Gene Horner, made that uh, little fiddle. and. Uh, He's a great fiddle maker, one of the last of the old time fiddle makers that I know of anywhere. Modern technology has moved beyond these simple inventions, but they still remain a tribute to the ingenious and independent spirit of ordinary folks. <laughs>